continuing on with the adrenal gland, we're going to talk about cortisol now, one of the main, one of the key hormones made in the adrenal gland. And which layer of the adrenal cortex was this made? I mean, this was made in the zona fasciculata. Remember, it's GFR. How do we remember that? Remember, it's the deeper you go, the sweeter it gets. So it's salt, sugar, sex hormones. So zona fasciculata. Now the functions of cortisol, what did I tell you was one of the main functions of cortisol? Remember, cortisol is a glucocorticoid, and a glucocorticoid functions to increase blood sugar. So it increases blood glucose. In an earlier lecture, I told you how, when we talk about blood glucose control, what methods do, do these hormones have to increase or decrease blood glucose? Remember, to increase blood glucose, what you're going to do is you're going to do glycogenolysis. So you're going to break down glycogen into glucose. And you're also, the other thing you do is you break down, break down lipid and protein. So when you break it down, you're going you're gonna to provide amino acids, you're going to provide glycerol for gluconeogenesis. Okay, so now you have decreased lipids, you're going to break down your protein from your muscle so you have less muscle. And the other way that cortisol increases blood glucose is through, it decreases insulin sensitivity. So decreased insulin sensitivity, tissues don't uptake the glucose as much, and you get decreased glucose utilization by tissues. So insulin sensitive, sensi insulin decreased insulin sensitivity. Okay, the next, there's a couple more functions that cortisol has, or glucocorticoids have in general. Next one is suppression of the immune system and anti-inflammatory effects. It does that by just basically reducing the amount of the inflammatory, inflammatory mediators such as prostaglandins, IL-2. And the other thing it does is it reduces white blood cell adhesion. So what's going to happen if your white blood cells can't adhere to the vessel walls? You're going to actually, what's going to happen to the levels of white blood cells or neutrophils in the blood? You're going to have increased white blood cells in the blood, but actually they're not going to be very useful because they're not going to be able to stick to the walls and then uh, enter the tissue but in blood increased white blood cells in blood which is what you would measure but overall it's a suppression of the immune system the next thing it does is it decreases fibroblast activity and collagen synthesis so this is important because you need this stuff for wound healing so you get decreased wound healing you poor wound healing you also get this stuff called purple stria if you have too much of it we want to see next is inhibited bone bone formation so it decreases osteoblast activity, I mean, osteoblast build, and then decreases which, which type of collagen do you need for bone? We need type 1. The way you remember that was bone and type 1 collagen. Okay, so next is increased blood pressure and does this by uh, upregulating alpha-1 receptors. I mean, alpha-1 receptors are in the arterioles. They cause vasoconstriction when they're stimulated. So again, glucocorticoids, blood glucose, Get suppression of the immune system this is important because if you, then you're susceptible for infections. You have poor wound healing from decreased fibroblast activity and decreased collagen synthesis. You get in inhibited bone formation. You're at risk. What what disease might be you might you be at risk for? You be might be at risk for osteoporosis and you get increased blood pressure. And I hammer this in because we're going to see that this is these are when when we have too much cortisol, you're going to see all this become a problem. I'm going to talk about that right now. This is Cushing syndrome, which is a syndrome resulting from too much cortisol release. So you can have too much cortisol from two things or two general things. Either too much ACTH production, ACTH stimulates the, the adrenal gland to make extra cortisol, or you have a direct overproduction of cortisol from the adrenal gland. So this one, too much ACTH production, we would call an ACTH-dependent etiology, and a direct overproduction is called an ADH-independent because it's the adrenal gland is producing too much cortisol independent of ACTH. So causes of ACTH-independent etiologies include one, exogenous cortical steroid use. So just using too much because you can take steroids over the counter. That's what we call we call them steroids. We use them as anti-inflammatory. Remember that. And we just said one of the main functions of cortisol or glucocorticoids was its anti-inflammatory function. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see bilateral adrenal hyper, uh, atrophy, and that's due to negative feedback suppression of ACTH. So cortisol is going to block ACTH, right? It's going to have low ACTH, 
And you need the ACTH to stimulate the adrenal gland. There's no ACTH to stimulate adrenal glands, and they're going to, they're going to atrophy. Now, the next cause of a ACTH independent Cushing syndrome is adrenal adenoma or carcinoma. So that's when you have an adenoma and adrenal gland, and that adenoma or carcinoma makes too much cortisol, and you get Cushing syndrome. So what finding would you see? Would you see atrophy in either of the adrenal glands? Which, and then if so, which glands would it be? Would it be the diseased gland or the non-diseased gland? You would see atrophy in the uninvolved adrenal gland. I hope this makes sense because this one's pumping out a lot of cortisol, so it's working very hard. So this one's definitely not atrophied. But you're, again, your ACTH is low because, again, cortisol is blocking ACTH. So your other adrenal gland sitting over here is not getting ACTH, and it's not getting stimulated, and it's atrophied, while this one is very is nice and healthy and a big fat tumor making cortisol. So now we're going to go to ACTH dependent, so stuff that, caught, that produces too much ACTH, which would release cause uh, eventually cause cortisol release. So number one is ACTH is from a pituitary tumor, where the anterior pituitary makes ACTH. And the other cause, do you remember what other cause, what other stuff can release ACTH? Talked about it a little bit. It's an ectopic ACTH production. For example, what remember there's a cancer in the lung that makes too much ACTH. That cancer would be the small cell lung cancer makes too much ACTH. So now you have too much ACTH, what's going to happen to your adrenal glands? You get uh, hyperplasia, you're going to get atrophy. You get extra stimulation, you're going to get hyperplasia. Okay, so exogenous corticosteroid use, adrenal adenoma, these have decreased levels of ACTH. Then you have pituitary tumor, ectopic ACTH, increased ACTH. Now, the syndrome, this is a syndrome, so it has a lot of symptoms you're going to see below. This, these three moon faces, buffalo hump, so moon faces is fat round face, buffalo hump is like a hump of fat on the, on the back, it's like a buffalo. And then chunk obesity, thin extremities, all result from the increase. You get increased appetite. You get increased insulin, so you get increased fat storage. Remember, the increased insulin comes from your insulin resistance. So you get all this fat storage, fat storage in the face and behind the neck. You get fat storage in the stomach. So that's part of some of the symptoms. The other one is from the decreased fibroblast activity and collagen synthesis. Remember, we said that that. It's going to lead to what? It's going to lead to poor wound healing. It's going to lead to abdominal striae, which is these purple looking lines here on the stomach. And you also get easy bruising. All that from the decreased fibroblastic activity, decreased collagen synthesis. Now, I also point out that there's thin extremities. Why would you have thin extremities here? Look at that. He's, remember, what, what do we say about the glucose production? Remember, when we want to make glucose, we break down the protein, we break down some lipids so you're going to lose all the muscle here so that's why he's very thin extremities and then what what do we say what was the other functions of of cortisol do you remember the other functions of cortisol so we, we already talked about the glucose production we talked about the fibroblast activity what other functions do we have when we had bone formation so we had bone formation so osteoporosis is a risk factor we were we talked about hypertension and it stimulates the alpha receptors and then immune suppression so these patients are at risk for infections with Cushing syndrome. So again, it's pretty much a direct, it just shows you directly all the functions of cortisol and what happens when you have too much of it. Now we're gonna go back to the e etiologies. I wanna talk about how we can figure out which is which and how do we even figure out whether we have Cushing, Cushing syndrome. The easy way to figure out whether you have Cushing syndrome is you can either measure cortisol levels because obviously it's just a problem, too much cortisol release, or you do a low-dose dexamethasone suppression test. So dexamethasone is a cortisol analog. Okay, so if you give a patient a cortisol, if you give them dexamethasone, what would you expect to happen from ACTH? Would you expect ACTH to be high, normal, or low? Well, remember, you're giving them a cortisol analog, so you would expect ACTH to be suppressed and to be decreased. But if the patient has Cushing, Cushing syndrome, then they're going to be making cortisol anyway. It's not going to matter. They're going to keep making cortisol because that's the whole problem here. They're going to have um, their their cortisol levels will remain high. Okay, so now you've diagnosed Cushing syndrome. Okay, what next? 
The next thing you have to do is you want to die, you want to check ACTH levels and you do a high dose dexamethone test. And that's going to help you differentiate between this and this. So if you have a low ACTH level, what, which which one is it? It's going to be ACTH independent or dependent. Remember, it's going to be ACTH independent. So that's either uh, exogenous corticosteroid use or they have a problem in the adrenal gland. And that all that cortisol that those two are making or or in the body is going to decrease the ACTH levels. Now you have ACTH levels, you know it's one of these, if you increase ACTH levels, and how do you differentiate that? You differentiate it thanks to the high-dose dexamethasone test. So if you give high-dose high dose dexamethasone, which is a cortisol analog, what would you expect? Well, you would expect, again, suppression of ACTH and suppression of cortisol. So for if you have a pituitary tumor, do you think it would increase or decrease? Do you think or stay the same? Well, in a high dose dexamethasone test, you would see suppression in a pituitary adenoma because of that hypothalamic pituitary axis. Even though it's an adenoma, you give enough, you give a high dose of the dexamethasone that your hypothalamic pituitary axis will work and it will decrease. Um, decrease uh, ACTH, decrease cortisol. And then thus, if you don't have any decrease, if there's no suppression from the high-dose dexamethasone, you know it's an ectopic production. And because this, this ectopic, remember, for example, what's the cause of an ectopic ACTH production? Remember, it's a small cell lung cancer, that's one cause. Is that, is that, that's not part of the hypothalamic pituitary axis. So this, this dexamethasone is not going to feed back on this, and so it's going to keep making cortisol, and you're not going to have any suppression. So that is Cushing syndrome and the cortisol function in a nutshell. This is important, and this is just this goes back to the etiology. And then you just want to be able to recognize this whole clinical picture. Just look at this picture here, and you you just know you have all the symptoms here. And if you actually if you see the symptoms, you already know a lot of the functions of cortisol. So that's it for Cushing syndrome.